if you don't recognize what appears to be really lovely stained glass in this image, it's actually a dragonfly's wing. This is uh, the Sunday that we begin the season of creation. And so we will be pulling images from God's good creation throughout our services this month and considering how we are connected um, with the, the rest of the world, with the rest of the universe. Please join me in the call to worship. What fragrance makes you feel happy? What fragrance makes you feel safe? A favorite flower? The beach or lake? <clears throat> Trees or grass? Food cooking? Coffee brewing? We gather today to worship God, who creates the flowers, who calls fig trees to put forth figs, vines to blossom and be fragrant. And now join me in the opening prayer. God who loves us and whose creation we experience in so many ways by sight and hearing, touch, taste, and smell, may we experience your love and care as we gather and worship today. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of confession. <clears throat> God of light and love, we are so often too slow to listen, too quick to speak, too quick to get angry. Forgive us, and may we forgive each other when we need to. And hear our personal silent prayers. And hear now the assurance of pardon. We are forgiven by God who always listens, who is always ready to hear us speak. 
and who longs to extend love and care to us. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God indeed for grace that allows us to start again, to let go of what weighs us down, to begin again with one another. So in whatever ways you have experienced that forgiveness, that grace, that mercy, you have gifts to share because it's a source of peace which comes from God and nowhere else. God of all that is, in this season of creation, we attend to our relationships with one another, with the earth, with creatures, and with you, the interconnectedness. So speak to us again that we might understand our connections with the words of your faithful ones across eons. Speak to us again, God and show us your way. Amen. Amen. Uh, we begin this morning with the Song of Songs. And, and I don't know if this is a text that you all spend a lot of time with, um, but I commend it to you. It's it's one of the fascinating books of the Bible. It's uh, one of two that does not mention God. And so there's been a lot of debate over the centuries about why was it included? Uh, it's love poetry. It's, uh, the, the songs and story told between two lovers who are, um, do not have the approval of those around them. And it's such lovely poetry. So this morning we have a bit from the second chapter of the song of songs sometimes known as the Song of Solomon, uh, Song of Songs. The voice of my beloved, look, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands beyond our wall, gazing in the windows looking through the lattice my beloved speaks and says to me arise my love my fair one and come away for now the winter is past and the rain is over and gone the flowers appear on the earth and the time of singing has come and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land the fig tree puts forth its figs and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Good one. And a second reading from the letter of James, the first chapter. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purposes, he gave birth to us by the word of truth so that we would be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Let everyone be quick to listen. Slow to speak, slow to anger. For human anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look with the perfect law, the law of liberty, 
and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act. They will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and their religion is worthless, excuse me, if any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for the orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself oneself unstained by the world. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. When I was in seminary, uh, I was part of a, a small group that did independent study with a professor at Columbia Seminary on the Song of Songs. Uh, we met at the professor's house and uh, read this text and read other um, predominantly medieval poetry written by monastics that quite frankly was pretty sexy. I mean, they were praying about God, they were writing about God, but it was a little steamy. So I commend the Song of Songs to you. Partly because we don't read it very often and partly because as mainline Protestants, we don't often talk about our relationships, our intimate relationships in relation to our faith. And I think we've missed an opportunity there. There's something that that is absolutely beautiful about this text, about these two young people who are glorying in one another, in the beauty of each other and in the beauty of the creation around them. That running away to the gardens, to the hills, all of the text is incredibly sensual. Did you smell the flowers? Did you uh, see how sweet the fig vines were? When we moved to Springfield, in, we moved into our house in October of 2017, and the leaves were falling off the trees and things were pretty bare uh, and, and gray and white, brown and white and gray most of the winter. And then the end of April came and our yard exploded in blossoms, things that we had no idea were there, blossoming trees and flowers, uh, rose bushes and daffodils and violets and hawthorn trees and weeping cherry and pear and apple, uh, four colors of magnolia. It was astonishing. It was overwhelmingly beautiful. And in our deepest, closest relationships. We can be so moved by beauty in the love that we share with someone else who loves us deeply in our worst moments and celebrates in our best. It is an interesting thing that this book doesn't mention God and yet has been part of our sacred texts for more than 2,000 years. I'm grateful for those early rabbis and the people who made the decision to include this text as part of the Hebrew Bible. It's part of the writings, uh, along with Proverbs and Psalms, recognizing that beauty, that our senses, that sensuality are all part of our relationships with one another and creation and God. I find it lovely and inspiring. The flowers that I brought home from church last Sunday that came from one of our dearly beloved's garden filled my kitchen with their scent. And it blesses me. That attention to our senses, to our relationships with creation, with our uh, beloved, is also connected with this reading from James and highlights our relationships, not just, not just with one another, not just with uh, 
those we love, but those amongst us who have greatest need. James is cautioning us about being angry with one another, but to be righteous. And I think there is righteous anger. I think there are moments when it is appropriate to be angry at injustice uh, that happens in the world. But when we attend, when we attend deeply with our feelings to our beloved, to our families, to our friends, to our community, James also reminds us that we can connect, we faithfully connect with those we don't know as well. That in caring for widows and orphans, in caring for what we sometimes refer to as the least and the lost, we are reflecting divine love for all of humanity. I've been thinking about that in terms of Labor Day as well. Labor Day's tomorrow. Uh, I, I was reminding folks on this call before uh, we opened the waiting room that tomorrow is uh, a day the office is closed. It is a national holiday. Uh, and it, although it's a day that a lot of people uh, grill out and um, hang out with family and friends, it's a day to appreciate those who labor, those who work hard, those who, who may work harder than, than the rest of us, who invest their strength and their bodies, their time and their skills. And it was labor unions who highlighted for us how hard people worked and the injustice of some of those working conditions. Children, don't work in mines anymore. Women aren't locked in sweatshops like at the Triangle Shirt Waste Factory. Labor Day invites us to attend to our connections to those who labor and the different ways we labor. As my kids were growing up and talking about what future jobs they have. Uh, I've said that um, some jobs are hard physically, some jobs are hard emotionally, some jobs are hard um, intellectually, and we choose how we might use our gifts and skills to serve others because that's what it is to be faithful, to use what God has given us to lift others up, to serve the widow and the orphan, the one who is alone, the one who is lost, the one who is sick and imprisoned. So I invite you to consider all the ways that you have been gifted with different skills, all the ways that you have served and labored, all the ways that you've been blessed by others' service and labor, because we are all connected. We are interconnected. We belong to one another and to God. The earth itself sustains us. The soil, the plants, the animals, the air, the water, we are sustained in our relationships. And so in this season of creation, in this weekend when we celebrate labor, and in a week when our texts, our sacred texts invite us to reflect on our most intimate relationships, may we find ways to love more deeply in all of our relationships as God so deeply loves us. Thanks be to God. Amen. So I invite you to sing.
with gratitude for all the ways that we have been loved and blessed, all the ways that we serve and are served, in all the ways that we are connected for God's sake. We offer ourselves, our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our financial contributions in all the usual ways, in the mail, bank deposit, online giving, texting. And thank you for your generosity. We are able to feed and shelter, educate and care for our congregation and our neighbors because of this congregation's generosity. Thank you. God of lights, we pause to bring ourselves and our resources to contribute to God's work. Accept our offerings of time and skill, listening and speaking. May, May they, they help, help spread your care and attention, attention we, we pray. pray. May God be with you. And, and also with, with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God. It, it is, is good to give to God, God thanks and praise. All that we have and all that we are is from God and given for the good of the earth. So here we return a token of such wealth, asking that all that passes through our hands be used for God's glory. Blessed be God forever. As human beings, we gather around this table as others at God's calling, flock, shoal, and swarm, drawn together to receive whom we are, to be more than our communities or even our churches can be alone. Like the earth, we do not own Christ's table. And like our common home, it's ours only when we share. Yet here, we're welcome, like those friends Christ first gathered. Welcome for justice, fulfillment, and love. Welcome with prophets and publicans, with eco-warriors and dodgy characters, with those you'd expect and those you'd rather weren't here. Welcome to refreshment by bread and cup, made by human hands from earth's bounty. Throughout all ages, as mountains dance and trees applaud, the cries of birth are also loud for all to hear and tend. Your Sabbath and Jubilee made space for all creation's refreshment, but we made exceptions. Your people sought milk and honey, yet injustice laid lands waste. Your prophets, Priests and farmers call us to account. Yet your loving signs of warning fall often by the wayside. And greed and pride inspire harmful choices knowingly embraced. Yet still comes Christ Jesus, friend of wildlife, beloved of the poor, scolding the seas, teaching with trees and God's wildness in wind. With Christ, we shoulder the cross of healing. We shudder at the disaster of truth denied by power. And yet, risen and present through food and faith, Christ calls us afresh to care for a damaged world. Holy, 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 God of power shares sky and soil's abundant glory. 
Hosanna. Hosanna. Help, Help us, God. Hosanna. Hosanna. Heal, Heal creation. creation. God, sustainer, gusting and fluttering life with good things of the earth, food and drink we offer, flesh and blood we are. As Jesus did, so do we. We break this bread. We share this cup. We trust that Christ who died, who died is, is Christ, Christ who rose and, and Christ, Christ who comes, comes again. As John said, seeing Christ, Lamb, Lamb of God, God you, you take, take away what truly harms the earth. Show compassion, send your peace. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hear us as we pray the way Jesus teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Love astounding, love confounding, limits fearful minds impose. Love renewing, love pursuing, every heart until it knows. Love's transforming, healing goodness. Love's That is, of course, Emily Wheeler and Blake Martin, two of our uh, local musicians, although Emily has now moved to New York City to pursue her musical career. Blessings on her way. As we continue our lives and our worship this week, we go to pay attention to what is around us, to listen when we need to hear, to speak with courage, 
and with kindness and justice. Amen. Amen. Amen.